ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to give this lecture. I am from the University of Munich in Germany. We started our hypothermia department in 1986 with the regional hypothermia with the main treatment of soft tissue sarcoma. <coughs> Okay, thank you. The summary of our work was the principle of hypothermia, local heating of the truth, uh, tumor to from 40 to 40 degrees. The hypothesis was soft tissue sarcoma treated at the university 86 and we performed phase three study comparing hypothermia and chemotherapy versus chemotherapy alone in high risk soft tissue sarcoma. We published the result in Lancet Oncology 2010 and According to this result, the European Society of Medical Oncology, ESMO, takes the hypothermia combined with chemotherapy in the guidelines of treatment of sarcoma and the National Comprehensive Cancer Center Network, NCCN, take it 2012. The next step was new clinical study for other treatment modality like pancreatic cancer phase 3 is now ongoing and we are planning now a next clinical study for breast cancer. The most important thing in this treatment modality in Europe, especially in Netherlands, Germany, and the people who works in the European Society of Hypothermic Oncology that we have a guideline for the clinical application, documentation, and analysis of clinical study and regional hypothermia. So the quality of the hypothermia in the Western of Europe is controlled regarding the European Society of Hypothermic Oncology. So you have the same quality of hypothermia in each clinical center in the Western of Europe who used rather radiative systems. <coughs> The rationale for the hypothermia, as was mentioned by Dr. Reinmiller, is the direct necrosis by high temperature, the thermal radiosensitization, chemosensitization, and increase of blood perfusion to improve the drug delivery and the activation of the immune system, so heat shock protein. So the heat shock response and anti-tumor immunity. So when we give the tumor hypothermia combined with chemotherapy, the hypothermia induced a heat shock protein, HSP, HSP 70, and this protein activate the natural active killer cells which attacks the tumor and we produce an immunological effect of the hypothermia. We have published 2008 in the European Journal of Cancer that increasing the tumor temperature combined with thermosensitive chemotherapy like aphosphamide increasing the cell killing rate of the tumor cell. So significantly increasing of the cell killing rate we see it at a temperature of about 41 degree and that's the area of 41 to 43 is where we are worked in the regional hypothermia. This was the result of our first phase one study. 
1990 that for the first time we have seen a direct correlation between measured tumor temperature in the tumor and the treatment outcome in the radiological response. So we see here the white point are the temperature distribution in patients who have shown a response after four cycle of chemotherapy and hypothermia. The black point are the patient who didn't choose any response for the treatment combination. So temperature is a direct factor of treatment outcome. So the story of Munich was the philosophy of the department was don't treat any patient out of a clinical study and we started 1986 to 90 with the first clinical study phase one two all of patient has second line chemotherapy and we published the result the result in 1990 and as i have mentioned we the result of this study direct correlation between treatment outcome and major temperature in the tumor the next step was to treat first line patient with etoposid, ifosfamid, and adramitrin, non-resectable, high risks of tissue sarcoma. What's high risks of tissue sarcoma? That's tumor, which have a diameter of at least five centimeter, grading two or three, deep and extra compartmental. After finishing this study and publishing it in the European Journal of Cancer, we started a second study with a retroperitoneal and visceral tumor, and we published it 2002. Regarding to this study and the success in the first line chemotherapy, we were able to establish a multimodal treatment a randomizing study with 341 patients in nine centers in the world, USA, Norway, Austria, Germany, and other country. The most important result of our phase two studies that we have seen patients who shown a response and we see response if we have sufficient temperature in the tumor have a significantly benefit in the overall survival to regarding to patient who have no responder. So we have a curative therapy and not a palliative therapy in this situation. And we have an overall survival of about 10 years in this study, which was published in Journal of Clinical Oncology. That's our big randomized phase three study, which we have published in 2010 in Lancet Oncology, new adjuvant chemotherapy alone or with regional hypothermia for localized high risks of tissue sarcoma, a randomized phase three multi-center study. And, and this is the treatment regimen. This is the schedule of the treatment, 341 patient. And the most important thing to see here, the most of the patient, they are non-extremity patient. We have randomized 169 patient in chemotherapy plus hypothermia versus 172 in chemotherapy alone. After that, we have seen the response to the treatment and 90% of the patient receive a definitive tumor resection. So we see no difference in the surgery in both arms of the study. 
60 patient receive definitive radiotherapy with no difference in the number of patient and after that we give four cycle of chemotherapy and hypothermia versus four cycle of chemotherapy alone and we test the local progression free survival disease free survival and overall survival so the chemotherapy as mentioned was aya etobazid ifosfamide and doxorubicin this is here the patient characteristic most important thing that more than 70 patient of the patient in both arm they have a tumor diameter of at least eight centimeter the median tumor diameter was 11 centimeter in both arm and the grading as i have mentioned we have no grade one only grade two and grade three the pathology liposarcoma limosarcoma synovial sarcoma all patient All patients were randomized, not in Munich, they were randomized by the European Organization for Treatment of Cancer, AORTC, and we have we have no difference in the characteristic of both groups. After four cycles of hypothermia and chemotherapy, we see the difference. An overall response of about 29 percent versus 13 benefit for the hypothermia arm and we see the progression disease is seven percent to 21 in the chemotherapy arm so we have response in the hypothermia and chemotherapy and progression in the chemotherapy alone Most important thing in this clinical studies is to see the 10 years control of the study, the local progression free survival, significant benefit for the combination of chemotherapy and hypothermia, and that was the main point of the study. So as we designed the study, we wanted to have a benefit in the local progression free survival. because both arms, they receive chemotherapy as a systemic therapy, and only the hypothermia arm receive a local treatment, and therefore, we wanted to have a local benefit. But we have seen, additionally to the local benefit, a, a benefit in the disease-free survival, so the metastatic situation with a p-value of 0 0.01. In the overall survival, in the intent to treat analysis, we have seen no benefit in the overall survival, but if we tested the patient who receive at least 50% of the treatment, we have a significant benefit in the overall survival. The side effect of the therapy, we have no significant difference in the side effect of the chemotherapy only in the leukopenia that we have more leukopenia in the hypothermia arm and the, we think that's the reason for this that we the most of our patient are patient with visceral and abdominal tumor and so we heat the pelvis of the patient and where the most bone marrow it is and we think that's that's the reason for this significantly higher leukopenia regarding to chemotherapy alone so we have none 
grade 3 or 4 the, the hypothermia side effect are all of them are mild to moderate so only 7% seven, seven uh, 4 percent are savory side effect that's the bolus pressure of the water on the patient some skin burn and tissue necrosis so we see the most side effect of the hypothermia are mild to moderate and they are only about 5% The discussion with other studies, the more the better, because other departments in the world, they give higher dose of chemotherapy to their patient. And we wanted to compare if we give the patient more chemotherapy, shall we have a better response? No. We see here, E4, 12 gram, we have here E for 7.5 gram, and the most of them, they have a progressive disease of 18 to 30%. Our study have only a progressive disease of 6 to 6.8%. So we believe that the hypothermia increase the effect of chemotherapy and we use only thermosensitive chemotherapy like aphosphamide or cisplatin. This is an example for a Russian patient who come from Moscow for the treatment with a soft tissue sarcoma. We see here the tumor legion before starting the treatment and the situation of the patient we see here after the first regimen of the treatment and so the shrinkage of the tumor and the most important thing what we have seen uh, after the resection with R0 resection we have no vital tumor cells in the here resected tumor so we have a pathological complete response. This is a next example for a dismoid small round cell tumor, a huge tumor in the pelvis, and we see the result here after four cycle of chemotherapy, then radiotherapy, and the patient are in ED. So the most important thing in our clinical study that definitive resection and definitive radiotherapy and to bring the, the patient to no evidence of disease at the end of the study. So the consequence of this publication, Lancet Oncology 2010, was that regional hypothermia combined with chemotherapy was taken in the NCCN guideline. For abdominal and for resectable disease. And in the ESMO guideline, the European Society of Medical Oncology, which was published in the Annals of Oncology 2012, and it was recommended with 1B. The new data we update now our clinical study data to see the effect if the effect of hypothermia combined with hypothermia is still to see in overall survival after 10 years or not we see here the effect of the hypothermia combined with chemotherapy is increased after the update now we have in the intent to treat analysis and significant benefit for the treatment combination of hypothermia and chemotherapy. Two years after the study, we have no benefit, and five years after the study, we see the benefit. 
and in the first analysis we see in each risk factor of the patient we have a benefit of the hypothermia this is primary tumor recurrent and this is inadequate resected patient and regarding if it's R0 or R1 all kind of resection they have a benefit of the hypothermia and most interesting thing is the G2 we see that G2 is not sensitive for chemotherapy. Here in hypothermia, we make G2 sensitive for chemotherapy. Some surgeon asked if the effect of the hypothermia is disappeared by best surgery. We have tested it and published in the Annals of Surgery comparing patient with abdominal tumor who have received R0 or 1 resection during the treatment in both sides. Both sides have the same number of R0 or 1 resection and despite the same quality of surgery, we have seen the benefit of hypothermia in the overall survival. So the effect of this publication now in the ESMO 2015 in Vienna was that the, the, our publication was taken as a late-breaking abstract and with a special announcement in the ESMO homepage. This is our hypothermia network, which is responsible for the quality of hypothermia and responsible for the clinical studies. We have about 10 centers in Germany and about 10 centers in Europe, and we hope we can increase this number of academic centers in, the, in Europe. And we have the International Journal of Epithermia. Thank you for your attention.